All right, my friends, welcome to another video lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna continue learning about basic audio mixing, and in particular, we're gonna be talking about visual support and transitions. So in the previous lesson, we went to town on this music up here and got it all nicely mixed. And now we're gonna concentrate on our Nat sound clips down here. So I'm gonna compress my music track here, bring it up, give myself some more room to work on these Nat sound clips, and then I'm gonna expand each one of them so that I can see them better. That's nice. And if you take a look, you can see I've got transitions on them and some keyframes as well. So I'm gonna take you through why I did what I did the way I did it. So let's start with the first clip here. Zoom in. And it's supporting this for a shot here. So let's play through and see what we've got. <laughs> Cool, sounds great. And you can see I've got this keyframe ramp in here. Now, why did I do that? Well, if you look at the waveform here, you can see the sound of the birds in the clip actually gets louder. So as they get excited toward the end of the clip here, I actually mitigate that a bit by bringing the level bar down as they become louder. So let's mute the music track and listen to just that alone. I'm gonna use the mute button here and play through so you can hear what I'm talking about. So as they get excited toward the end, I use the keyframe ramp to lower the level to keep a sort of even balance across the length of the clip. All right, so let's move on to the next clip here. We've got this field at sunrise, sunset, you decide. And I've got another ramp here at the end of this clip as well. But you can see the audio waveform is pretty constant across the length of the clip. So why did I ramp it down? Well, that has to do with what's going on visually up here. I have this dip to white transition and I'm actually mirroring what's happening visually down here in the sonic realm. So as we leave the shot and fade into this world of white, we're bringing down the level of the audio associated with it too. So let's listen to that. You can hear it dip down and get weaker as the screen becomes white. Now for this next little section here, we have several clips working together. We've got the ocean surface here, this underwater shot, and then this shot of these waves sort of sizzling on the sand here. And below the line, we've got that supported with several Nat Sound clips. And you can see we've got keyframe ramps all over the place here. And again, that is to support what's happening visually in the sonic realm. So as we leave this ocean surface shot and dissolve into this underwater shot, the sound that supports the ocean surface shot ramps down and fades out. And then the underwater shot ramps in. And then when the shot is finished dissolving in and solid here, you can see it peaks out at its maximum level. And then as we dissolve out from the underwater shot to the waves on the beach, the opposite happens. The underwater shot ramps down and the waves sizzling on the sand ramp in over the course of that dissolve. So let's play through and hear what that sounds like. Really cool. And then at the very end here, as we leave the sandy beach and dissolve into this parking lot time lapse here, we've got the same thing happening, a ramp down and then a pretty decent length transition as well, working in conjunction to take us from one location to another. Now, speaking of transitions, you can see I have them at the boundaries of all the clips here. Now, why am I doing that? Well, that is an audio mixing technique. 
So we'll return to the forest shot here. And if I remove the transition, I want you to listen to what it sounds like when we hit this clip of forest sound. It just abruptly cuts in very suddenly. And that has a very jarring effect on your viewer. So we're gonna utilize this boundary transition technique here. I'm gonna put in a transition and shorten it. It doesn't have to be very long. By default, it's one second. I'm gonna shorten it to around five or six frames and play across it again. You can hear it softens the arrival of that Nat Sound clip, changing it from this jarring, abrupt, sudden arrival to something that is smooth and professional. Same thing, leaving the clip. Fades out very quickly, just softening the departure of that sound. And you can see I do that everywhere here. Now I'd like to draw your attention to another aspect of this. If I zoom in quite far here, you can see that the clip boundary actually spans the cut. The sound of this Nat Sound clip starts just before the cut point here. Why is that happening? Well, that is a sound designer's trick. It actually enhances the visual perception of the cut if the sound starts slightly before and allows the viewer to perceive both things, the audio and the video, simultaneously. So if you really concentrate when I play through here, you'll hear the sound start just before the visual cut happens. And I do that everywhere in the timeline here. You can see this one spanning the cut as well. The next one here starts just before, spanning that cut as well. And this is done all the time professionally. So I challenge you to pay close attention to movies and online series and see if you can hear where this is happening. Okay, so let's unmute the music and play through all of this and hear what it sounds like together. Nice. I think the arrival of that ocean surface clip is a little bit strong. So I'm gonna zoom in and raise up my audio video divider bar here to give myself a little more room below the line. Expand my second Nat sound track here. Okay, and let's go to work. So what I think what I'd like to do is drop the level of the first part of the clip here where it arrives. So I could select the entire clip and use the gain function to drop it by say, I don't know, 3 dB. And that would drop the entire waveform here. I'm really concerned about just the first area. The problem being that where this fade out occurs, I like the mix between these two clips and by weakening the whole thing, I'm gonna change their relationship. So I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just change the level of the beginning part here, up to about right before the transition occurs. So I think what I'm gonna do is select this keyframe where the ramp starts and drop it. Again, using my left bracket, boom, boom. I'm gonna go down 3 dB, play through again and see what that sounds like. That's better. I think I'd also like where the ramp starts here to happen just a bit later. So I'd like to move this keyframe over to the right. So I can easily just using my selection tool, grab onto the keyframe and move it left or right. But it's very easy to accidentally raise and lower it while I'm moving it. So there's a trick to this. If I select the keyframe and hold down the shift key and then slide laterally right or left, I get a nice even movement without that up and down component. So I'm gonna pull it just a little bit later and play through again, see how that sounds. 
nice. That's really good. I really like that. I think I'd also like to drop the level of the arrival of this underwater clip as well. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit further, select this keyframe here and pull it down slightly. Play through again. Ah, much smoother. I like that. Let's continue. Okay, so I think the waves sizzling on the sand there overall through the entire length of the clip, ramp in, ramp out, everything, just too strong. So I'm gonna gain those down. Select the clip, G key, drop by negative three, reduce the strength, play through and see what we've got. Ah, much better, much better. All right, so I'll use the backslash key to zoom to timeline, bring my playhead home, and let's play through that entire sequence. Really nice, well done, like it a lot. So what do we do here? Well, we went through and made sure that all of our Nat sound clips had proper keyframing to support their relationship to the music as well as the visual aspects of the sequence. So we ramped down the excited birds here. We used another keyframe ramp to support this dip to white transition. And then we used multiple ramps to support our dissolve sequence from the ocean surface to the underwater realm to the waves sizzling on the sand. And then we played through everything as a whole and made minor adjustments to ensure that the relationship between all the elements was clear, balanced, and properly supportive. And the changes that we made to these two clips here that were just slightly too aggressive we're very subtle, and that's a point I'd like to make here. Audio mixing is quite often a very subtle art. You don't want it to draw attention to itself. If people can't perceive what it is that you're doing, you're doing your job very well. Now, sure, there may be situations where you wanna have more bold elements, things that are more abrupt and shocking in nature. An action sequence, for example, where there's gunshots and car crashes, things of that nature. Those would call for a different type of mixing than this. But most of what you're gonna be doing in the audio mixing world is very subtle in nature, calling for you to balance things in a very finite way without drawing attention to the work that you're doing. After all, editing is the invisible art, right? And the audio mixing aspect of that, for the most part, should be the same way. Well, that about does it for this video lesson, my friends. I'll see you again in the next one.